me, Chris, with Body Nova Fitness Coaching. And I'm here, I'm talking about, um, well, you're going to see more of this, and um, the condition is called skinny fat. Okay, so a lot of us trying to get ready for summer, or a lot of people trying to get ready for summer, you know, they, they fall into what they call skinny fat, or just, or the other end of the equation is uh, normal weight obesity. And I'm going to explain both to you in a sec. Okay, when you are skinny fat, you know, you can be overweight, I mean, you could be normal weight or maybe slightly underweight but your body fat is high and um, that that um, presents a unique situation because um, you know weight is not a problem for you to look your best weight is not a problem you know and that even goes um, normal weight obesity it's usually a, a further end of it where um, what they did was um, they took people and they measured, they did the BMI, the height versus weight thing. And what they found out was, you know, they were all of healthy, you know, in the healthy range, which is uh, what, um, 20, no, above 18.5. Um, so let's say 18.5 or, or 18.5 to uh, 25 of the BMI. Okay, so, um, or 25.99. So over 26 is, um, over 26 was overweight and uh, over 30 you know falls into obesity okay now with the normal weight obesity um, what people found out is when they measured their body fat they were obese because they carried too much of their weight was fat um, even though they were of a healthy weight so that's a unique set of circumstances and that's also in here with being skinny fat um, and, and the reason again being is their weight is not a problem but in some cases their metabolism could be a problem okay so because you know a lot of people are under a whole lot of stress um, they get bad nutrition or crappy nutrition um, you know or let me rephrase that or low nutrient nutrition um, you know so it presents a unique set of circumstances because due to the, due to the lifestyle the metabolism may slow down so the rate of burning calories might not be that of the um, of an average person maybe of healthy weight or even an, uh, uh, just an overweight person you know uh, the average overweight person who's way overweight but they're overweight more um, because they eat uh, tons and don't have any other issues to uh, deal with but anyway with people that fall into that category, they had much more risk than the people did who were of a healthy weight. So that's, um, and that's like, you know, more likely to get diabetes, more likely to, you know, um, heart disease, um, you know, they have um, um, high blood pressure, you know, things like that, larger around the waistline, you know. So um, with that, when you're thinking of situations like that, you know, um, you want to go about it in a unique way um, and here's some tips for that okay so um, in that category one of the things that you do is gain some muscle okay and now it's not going to be the same way because you hear people and they talk about the traditional hey um, I'm going to dirty bulk I'm going to dirty bulk I'm going to dirty bulk okay but if you do it that way remember if your body fat is high you don't have good carb tolerance your, your ability to you to efficiently use carbohydrates is not good especially if you fall into normal weight obesity okay so um, you may have a lower carb intake a higher fat intake um, um, a, a moderate to high protein intake you know and those are ways that you can um, fix that um, um, yeah so and gain some muscle now you know I, I have post where uh, I talk about two different ways to gain muscle um, one by doing metabolic stress you know, or using extended sets, just a high amount of work in short periods of time. And that that is also great for fat loss. So that's kind of kills two birds with one stone. Um, if you wanted to be, you know, if you were somebody that um, has never worked hard. One of the things I come across is you have people that want to compete and things like that. And they want to do it in a hurry. Like, yeah, um, I got four months, five months, whatever, uh, three months, four months, five months, whatever. You can do it. And it's, the problem with it is, is they've never worked hard in their life. So as soon as you apply the pressure to them, they crumble. Okay, so, um, you know, using the traditional um, moderate weight, you know, between six and 12 reps, 
uh, moderately heavy weight, you know, um, for lower reps, um, that is a way that you can get around that, you know, because you can use it and try to gain muscle um, on a lower, on a small, very small calorie deficit or, or maintenance level calories and um, you could drive your muscle up, okay, and uh, cut your body fat down a little bit. So what that does is when you drive up your muscle, you will also increase the rate that you burn calories at, okay. So, um, and then drive that muscle up a bit and then maybe try to get into some more um, um, aggressive fat loss uh, programming. So that's one way um, you could train for it. Of course, you know, you got metabolic stress and extended sets, you know, that can be used with the, the type of reps that uh, produce muscle growth. That is another way. And that, like I said, that is very good for uh, fat loss. All right. So second is you have to focus more on getting more uh, high quality foods with good nutrition. You know, so you definitely want to avoid more processed foods. You want to have, you know, good lean proteins, um, unprocessed proteins, um, higher glycemic index carbs, which of course are unprocessed. You're thinking of potatoes and, and uh, you know, uh, maybe brown rice, um, you know, things like that, where the, 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 the starches have a lot of fiber in them. So if you have more fiber, you know, um, you get better control of your blood sugar. If your starches also have a good amount of protein, you get more control of your blood sugar. And another way that you get good control of your blood sugar is to include healthy fats. So the, the traditional thinking is like, yeah, eat low fat, eat low fat, eat low fat. But you can't have high carbs in this case. So you want to balance that out. You know, you bring down the carbs, you bring up your healthy fats. And that will also, um, you know, increase you know, your health and help correct some of the reasons why you got skinny fat or help keep you from getting skinny fat in the first place, you know. So that, um, the nutrition is going to become more important. And even with the nutrient timing, you know, having um, supplements, you know, having a, oh, sorry, having a meal at the right time, you know, maybe you have most of your carbs closer to your workout, you know, if you do the drinks, you know, you do your pre and your post or your pre during a post. Um, I just made a post on nutrient timing that you're going to see. Um, you can search for it. If not, um, message me. I will send you the link. Okay. Um, it should go up. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so your, your nutrition has become very important. Okay. Um, because you want to fuel your ability to work hard, but you don't want, you want to pr have that prevent you from getting fatter or, or, prevent you from losing fat. Um, people will use fat burners in, in this case, which I'm not opposed to them. A lot of them are crap out there, but I'm not necessarily opposed to them. But what it is, is people try to rely on them for everything. So it's like, hey, I'm going to have a damaged metabolism. Let me take more fat burners. Hey, uh, I'm having a rough time getting through the day. I, I, you know, my sleep is bad. So instead of fixing the sleep, I'm just going to take more fat burners and use that as a crutch for me to feel good through the day instead of handling business the right way. Or I never take time off, so I'm adjusted to them, so I start having um, bad habits like trying to solve the problem by taking more fat burner, more fat burner, more fat burner. So um, if you, uh, you know, I can give you, give you some tips on that. Also, um, like I said, just send me a message and I can tell you about a few good ones if that's the case. All right, so um, smaller calorie deficit. Um, just a usual uh, rule of thumb, some people will do it by um, saying their body weight times 10, okay, which might not be bad, you know, um, but you want to stay closer to your maintenance, so it might be body weight times 12, you know, um, and then you take maybe 0.35 times your uh, body weight, and that'll be your grams of fat, or um, maybe you'll go um, um, your body weight, anywhere between your body weight and your body weight, uh, times 1.5 for your protein intake, you know, that would be good. And then the rest you can fill in with your carb intake if you're doing that right. So um, there's another way to do that where you do it by your body fat, but um, you'll have to get your body fat. I won't tell you more about that, but you definitely don't want a large calorie deficit because you're trying to create a large calorie deficit because your metabolism might already be jacked up. Okay. And also you need to gain muscle to fix this. 
You know, um, your weight isn't a problem. You're under muscled in, in relation to your weight. That's the problem. All right. So the other thing is people are going to be fixated on just body weight. Um, body fat is more important, again, because you're not overweight. So you should get that checked monthly and do it in the same spot, the same uh, um, state. So um, if you did it first thing before breakfast or whatever, you go down and you do that before you work out. You don't try to do it after you work out because uh, um, no matter what I say, a lot of you people are going to try to use bioelectrical impedance. It's easy to throw off. I can do it by accident. I mean, actually, you can do it by accident. I can do it anytime I want to. Um, so you'll get you'll never know when you're getting a good reading because you can get a good bad reading but you could also get a bad reading so um um or bad good reading sorry so that's one of the things about that and you know um that you want you want to monitor body fat or you can just do it by photos but you have to be real honest about yourself or what you see and you can't be like some of these instagrammers that'll do three every week and say oh well, look how much i've changed no you have to wait you probably want to wait at least two three weeks between your photos and you can see you know how you've reduced uh your body fat so um those are a few things that are important when you're trying to overcome the skinny fat the deal um Doing HIT would be a good idea. It's good here because you want to try to keep your exercise volume. Um, not you don't want to get um, extravagantly high because eventually, you know, you're gonna want to go aggressively at the fat loss. So um, that's something to think about. You know, getting a good HIT program, um, aggressive HIT program, 20 minutes. You know, 20 minutes can make all the difference in the world. So um, uh, yeah, if you have any questions. Um, Leave a message below or message me directly.